Welcome to the Ultimate Coach Podcast, Conversations from Being, inspired by the book, The Ultimate Coach, written by Amy Hardison and Alan Thompson. Join us each week with the intention of expanding your state of being, and your experience will be remarkable. Remember, this is a podcast about being. It is a podcast about you. To explore more deeply, visit theultimatecoachbook.com. Now, enjoy today's conversation from B. Welcome back for uh, another episode of the Ultimate Coach Podcast. My name is Philip Batu, and I'm really excited to try a new format um, this week. So far with this podcast, it has been every week. I've been really just um, having a real free flow in conversations and just seeing what comes up. And uh, today we're going to try a little different format. Um, I'm being joined today by the wonderful Matt Smith. Matt is uh, is a coach, but also the uh, the visionary behind the London experience. And um, in a conversation I had with Matt recently, what we discovered was talking around hidden agendas. And so we're creating a bit of a container in how and what we're going to explore together today. And we invite you to really explore alongside of us. And we're going to be uncovering hidden agendas, why we have them, what they are, how to overcome them, and um, get, hopefully, we can both start explore that for ourselves and each other and become more free in how we show up in the world. So, Matt, hey, thank you, Matt, for being here with me today. Uh, it's my pleasure, Philip. Thank you for having me. and I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, well, I, I, you know, we just spoke a couple of days ago, and there's something that you shared with me. Um, what, why don't we open with that? Um, maybe you can tell us a little bit about uh, some of the realizations that you've had from being the vision behind uh, the London experience and how that unfolded, and and some of the realizations you've had about your own hidden agendas around that. Yeah, of course. Um, it's. Sorry, my mind's jumping around with so many places to start and where to go with it. But essentially, I remember doing the meditation on on December 27th and being given the vision for the ultimate experience in London. And uh, and it was it was a phenomenal experience, like a, as you you were aware, and I think people have seen that um, we created. When I say we, like me and the, and the whole team, everyone involved, including yourself, created a. a the ultimate experience in London with 500 people there and, and, and incredible speakers, um, Steve, Amy, Karan, um, Alan, it was just, uh, and, and Casey doing his thing as well. And, and it was just a, a phenomenal experience. But, but since then I've been in this bit of a, just a weird space where like motivation was low and, um, almost like an apathetic kind of energy you know like I reached the mountaintop the pinnacle because it was a vision that I had for four or five years like me on stage and, and a big group of people and I was like yeah that's that's the goal that's the vision and then and then it was like this space of like nothingness afterwards it was weird mm. because still having to like show up in life like for my coaching business and my clients which was fine like I that that's what I love to do and and really enjoyed that but then day to day was just a bit of a I heard this expression called like a leaf in the wind. I was just being blown around different places and so many things have happened since then. And then um, the, the biggest thing was the relationship with, with my girlfriend, Jess, and we were spending more time together and being with each other and, and things were showed up for us. And, and uh, there was this conflict because I believe that we're all worthy and deserving of, of everything that we want to have and experience and be and do. And I don't believe we have to prove ourselves or or anything. But talking on the hidden agenda thing is what I didn't realize is a lot of what I did in the world was from a place of needing external validation, approval, acceptance, and love. And right. uh, and there, there's no bigger high, I guess, when you're seeking that than being on stage and having 500 incredible people singing happy birthday to you. Like, that, like yeah. there ever was a tick the box for external validation and approval and love, that's kind of it, right? 
when yeah. But I remember, I don't know if you ever saw or heard like the Tyson Fury story and, and his interviews and things about how when he became world champion, he went off into like this depression thing and, and, mm. and all the drugs and all of that. Well, and it I didn't happens go into... a lot. Yeah, it happens a lot. Yeah, it's... And so I had to do a lot of soul searching and, uh, and things since then to realise, and it was only recently that I realised that that's what it was, this, this, this need for external validation and, and love and approval. Yeah. And then... So yeah, that that's kind of the journey up until recently, mm-hmm. and I can we can probably share a bit more as we yeah, chat. Well, well, you know, I, I want to firstly just acknowledge you for your openness. You know, one of the things I love about you, Matt, is you're just firstly you're so authentic and vulnerable, and just willing to show up and share things as they are. And I really appreciate about that. I, I appreciate that about you. What I also appreciate is you're always, you know, you're someone who's going to do whatever it takes to do the work and mm. get complete with whatever it is you need to be complete with and um and to keep you know you have such a commitment to your own growth that um just listening to you speak you know I can just see that and I just want to acknowledge you for that and find that super inspiring so thank you for for sharing that and you know from what I'm hearing it's um wanting to feel loved and accepted and that isn't isn't if you think about that, isn't that like what our whole childlike from when we we're born as a baby to growing up, like every child just wants to feel love and accepted. Mm. And so this whole seeking external validation, gosh, I can so, so, so relate to that. And um it's I don't think it's something that you you kind of have figured out and um and you know you can you you know you've seen it and you're and you're now free and you can keep you know and you're and you're you're enlightened right and that's it you've you've understood that nothing outside of you can bring validation and you are now free to to show up and and be powerful I, my um my experience of this and the way that you share it with it is it, it's like comes with levels of awareness mm. so wanting to feel loved and accepted is um can be a place to come from when you're creating something and yeah. and in in what I'm hearing in your sharing is, would you say that the whole experience, the hidden agenda, and the place that you may not have been aware of, but there was a part of you that was doing it because you wanted to feel loved and accepted? A hundred percent. Like said, wow, a hundred percent. Okay. Like no, not like it was a hundred percent of me that was the only reason I did it, but I'm, I'm yeah, not certain that there was a that was where yeah something was coming from. I mean. So, like, so yes. So if we just, if we just look at that, if you say you're a hundred percent certain, what, what is, um, what is actually the payoff of actually being love and accepting for you? What was the payoff? Um, the, the payoff to getting love and accepted was feeling safe. Right. So kind of safety and, and, and security. Yeah. If, yeah. yeah if I get, because it, again, having studied, yeah human behavior and why we do what we do that i knew that's where it was coming from it's the if i don't get love and acceptance and validation then there's that fear of being abandoned and and then yeah yeah so avoid avoid abandonment yeah feeling yeah. safe yeah yeah and um and you know what's also interesting is when, when we look at these sort of this is a way of being you know i'm being someone who is seeking love and acceptance when you're being that what what's the cost the authenticity because authenticity yeah 100 well, percent. because if yeah. i believe that my safety is outside of me i'm going to try and do things to yeah. get that from other people which which can be manipulative at times yeah so and so the yeah so the doing looks like what <sighs> trying to be trying to be perfect the doing looks like yeah you have to look perfect yeah sound perfect be perfect um, yeah. and that's tiring Oh gosh, yeah. I, I was I was a um, professional, looking good, or <laughs> perfect. Or <laughs> I had a whole profession where I was a professional people pleaser. So yeah. I mean, I, I we we can speak a bit more about that later. But um, you really this this really resonates with me on so many on so many levels. So let's just keep looking here uh, because I think there's 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 more to uncover around what are what what other costs are you paying for in coming from a place of being 
loved and accepted. Mm. Yeah, I'm open to looking at those. Yeah, like what what are the other costs that you may not even be aware of? Um, with with integrity as well. You're not living well. I wasn't living with like full out integrity. It's not even integrity. It was the cost. It's a really good question. Like energy. Like it. Yeah. A lot of a lot of energy because again, I'm trying yeah. to, trying to be something you're not, and right. then it costs connection as well. Like one of my biggest values is connection. Um, wow. Yeah. But it, but it costs uh, that connection because because no yeah. one's perfect. Everyone's got struggles. But if I'm out there going, hey, my life is perfect. Look at me. Although people might aspire to that, there's no connection. There's no genuine connection. Actually, it creates disconnection. Yeah. And what you want to what you want to create through that is connection. Mm-hmm. And it's so just it's, so it's actually it's a counterproductive way mm-hmm. on fulfilling on what you want. Yeah, I completely agree. You know, and um, and it's it's so interesting that without examining these hidden agendas, these things just happen and they go unnoticed. Yeah. So what what is it what what is it that shifted for you when you got to see that? As in in what are some of the realizations and the shifts that you've had? So I had a call with a gentleman um, not so long ago, and he gave me this analogy of um, when I'm going to anybody, especially my girl, I was going through something a few weeks ago and, and uh, I was like, why can't um, Jess just love me when I'm going through this stuff, right? Give me, give me, I need love in this moment because I was, because I was aware of childhood trauma and stuff and what I need is, is love. And uh, he was like, you know, when you go to somebody needing love, you're almost like a beggar in the street. And there was no judgment mm-hmm. when he was saying this about like, right. But he was like, you're going to them like you're a beggar in the street. And he was like, how does that make you feel in your body when you feel like you're going to your girlfriend like a beggar in the street going, I need love from you. And I was like, it doesn't feel very empowering. It feels restrictive. Yeah. It feels all of this stuff, like heavy and horrible and, and whatever. And he was like, long story short, he was like, you need to realize that you you already have all the love. You, you, yeah. you are it. Like you, There's an abundant source of where it comes from. And you can just give that to yourself. That was a realization that I could yeah. just give it to myself in that moment that I that I thought I needed it from out there. Yeah. I could just give it to myself. And that shifted everything in the relationship. Like since that happened, me and Jess have just mm-hmm. gone from strength to strength with it because now I'm not showing up from a needy place whenever either she triggers me or I'm going through something. I can just be with myself, give myself what I need. And then I'm showing up from love, as love in that moment. And then... Uh, yeah, I, 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 I'm listening to what you're saying with a lot of um, a lot of care in the language that you're using around this, and I find it fascinating how you've described this. And I can really recognize the shift and the beauty in recognizing that the love that you seek is 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 within you. Um, there's something that you said that that I'm that doesn't look. Um, let me just let me just say it. When you say "give it to myself." Yeah. What, is, what does that mean? So uh, let's use an example. Um, I'm going to have to go back a few weeks because I've been so into it at the moment. Yeah. I remember an example that... Well, maybe I can, I can share something that looks... How that looks to me. Uh-huh. So, so give it to myself. Um, I, when I listened to that, what I heard was it was love, right? So yeah. give yeah. the love that I seek, give it to myself. And I can see that. And and what occurs to me is uh, rather than give it to myself is recognize that it is what I am. Mm. And I, I cannot give myself what I already am. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, I heard that as, a, as an analogy somewhere where someone said, if, if you're a yeah. cow, if you're a cow, you can't give yourself a cow like you are. Right. A cow. <laughs> yeah. So so it feels to me like there's um, there's a recognizing a waking up to the truth that who you are in your essence is love and being, and that being a place to come from. Um, and I, and I, yeah, I, I, I want to say that this is, this is really a, uh, Oh, this is really something that has completely shifted my being in, mm. in, in how I can, yeah. in in the way that I, that I've started to, to live my life, but also this, this idea of accomplishment. Um, and one of the, you know, when we often when we talk about all these great things that we want to do in the world, and um, 
I notice that sometimes I can get overwhelmed, you know, thinking of everything, mm. everything that I want to create, right? And um, and I notice that there's been a distinction that that I have become more present to, and it is seeing the difference between I want to create this, and when I have it, then I'll be accomplished. Mm. To I am accomplished. Now, what do I want to create from a place of I am accomplished already? Mm. Where do I want my I am accomplishedness to flow into? Mm. And I feel like that is, I am not looking to fill a void through accomplishments. Mm. I am looking to overflow from a place of accomplishment. And that for me has been oof, um, serving, expansive, loving, giving, uh, sharing. And um, and I feel like that's actually how I feel this whole conversation is being created from. Yeah. When you, yeah, you've you fill your own cup and and I'm yeah. and it's like yeah. right, now, now what do I want to do from this place? Where do I want to pour this yeah accomplishment or love or beingness? Where do I want to pour it into? And it's a choice of what you just desire to create, want to create, rather than yeah. what you, you need to, so you can yeah. get something from it. Right. And that was the, that was a good thing about like the ultimate experiences. Cause I was, when I did the meditation, I was just in this space of right. I'm, I turn my hand, turn my life over to, I, again, I call it God, not that anything's outside of us, but it's like what's inside me that wants to come out and then mm. got the vision and, and, and ran with it. And it's not like it was, it was me and my vision because I spoke to a lot of people right. after I ran with it and they were like, Oh my God, I had that idea come to me, but I never ran with it. So I don't believe it was, because we're all one anyway, right? If we yeah, really get into yeah. it, we're all one and it's all part of the expansion of the universe and thing. And so I was in already yeah. in that point. So if I'm, I don't need anything, like use yeah. me. Yeah. Beautiful. So look at who, who are you being to run with it? Service. Yeah. That, that was, that, that, that's the word. Yeah. Service. Yeah. So you were being service. Yeah. Yeah. Service, to, service to the cause, service to the yeah. idea, service to the people that would be there, um, almost service to like whoever was going to be speaking as well. Um, just just serve serve the team in any way. Like I remember the team calls. I was like, right, what do we need? What do you need from me? And and, and things like that. And it it was just from this place of service. But then, as we go through life, I don't know if you've heard the phrase "new levels, new devils." But no, you know, that's a good one. Because <laughs> <laughs> again, like I told you in a previous conversation, I've never actually seen a, an event through to completion. I was the, the failed event runner, like never had any events um, sell one ticket, let alone 500. And so that was a new level for me, this running this event, having a team um, and new levels came up for me. Like, who am I to run this and and things like that. And And when you go into those new levels, you can either face the devils that come up or you can run away from them. And and I, like I've shared before, I nearly ran away. Imposter syndrome was was massive for me. And so I nearly ran yeah. away from it. But fortunately I had brilliant people around me like just encourage me and and the team like Rag and 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 Kush were were phenomenal. They called me into yeah. the space and so did Steve to be fair. Yeah. Um like created me as as the version of me that I needed to be in order to see this thing through. And and so, but it ultimately comes down to a choice. Like yeah. I still could have chose to walk away and listen to imposter. It's, it's, it's also an, an interesting word to call it the devil. Because hmm. because what is that devil thing? Because it, it does sound pretty nasty. Um, I would say it's the, the stories. Yeah. That everything that is an illusion. So everything, yeah. everything that we're not. So it's not like some some beast down in hell waiting for you, but it's it's almost like um, everything everything that we're not. Like I, again, I believe that we yeah. are essentially just the light. So the devil is anything that supposed that I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy, I'm not deserving, um, anything that's not true. Right. So what what I'm hearing in this is you became present to what's going on inside of you. You became present to the stories that were yeah. going on, and in becoming present to that, you were able to what? Be bigger than it. Right. So when you when I face it, it because I think that's what a lot of people are, they're scared to actually face the fear or the feeling. Yeah. yeah. They believe that they're bigger than like the, the feelings or the So what what it. what was the it you had to face? That was the big scary it. The feeling of 
abandonment, the feeling of rejection, the feeling of not worthy, not deserving, not good enough. Um, so, yeah, all these self-judgments were coming up for you. Yeah. Yeah. And then you started believing that's, that that's what you are. Yeah. And, I, and you started identifying with them. Yes. And then at some point, what happened? What, 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 what? Yeah. Like, how did that, what shifted for you? Again, this is just a, a personal belief of mine. That I believe that we're always supported in our, in our greatness. And, and again, God, or whatever you want to call it, wants us to realize our potential, our truth. And we live in a supportive universe that's always helping mm. us. And so because I have that belief, um, it, it almost opens the door for people to come in and say, hang on a minute, that's imposter syndrome. Hang on a minute, you are the leader you need to be. Hang on a minute, you are good enough. Hang on a minute, you are loved. Um, and it's just whether mm. we're, we're open to receiving that yeah. or believing the story and the lie. And so that's, that's what shifted is, is allowing and, and not wanting the smallness as well is not wanting that not being committed to the smallness is like no i don't want it i don't want the fear i don't want the yeah ultimately it comes down to fear doesn't it whether we we fear abandonment or we fear judgment or we fear rejection it's still under the umbrella of fear yeah and was there a time you just wanted to run away from it all yes <laughs> and i think there was a time you even did just gave yourself the space and went up to the mountains and or in the midlands and uh, had a yeah had a bit of a ret some retreat from yeah 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 and, and then um, yeah. I'm ha i'll happily do that as well like if, I'm, yeah. if i do what i'll give myself permission to do that but not run away and hide but just take myself away for and give myself what i yeah. need you know when we talk yeah. about giving it to ourselves it's like yeah. what do i what do i need in this moment right now do i need space do i need food do i need sleep do i need what what do i need right now yeah so yeah and coming back to what you're saying about you know i need you to give me love i mean just that as a sentence right there's so much that we can learn from that and from that place of being in relationships. And, you know, when I hear you say that, what comes up for me is one of my um, hidden agendas that I've had for, gosh, many years was the idea of giving and receiving. Mm. That was my hidden agenda. My hidden agenda was I would give to receive and mm. there was always like a, um, an expectation when I was giving and it's really something that um, sort of I've just taken on as something normal, something that I've learned from family and, and, mm. and that I had to unlearn. And um, it is uh, really um, noble for me to think that, you know, I'm, I'm giving without expectations and I'll create all these beautiful stories of, but I'm, but I, um, I was really blind to to a lot of that and it was costing me a lot of connection and inauthenticity yeah and i would connect with people thinking what can i get i would be in relationships thinking um my hidden agenda is what's the benefit for me yeah and it's yeah it's um you know it takes a lot of self honesty to 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 see that and to you know be willing to just yeah accept that or even own up to that and uh cool. and and uh, and i feel like from a place of just love from a place of unconditional love like there is there is no giving and no receiving mm. there just is yeah and every act of care is an exchange of i don't even know if the, if exchange is the right word i think it's more of an expression of love it it's it's almost like being in alignment with the universe as well. Again, I use this this um, analogy with clients. It's like the flower. The flower doesn't blossom to to give something to the bee so that the bee can take it and then pollinate it and spread it around. So the flower then gets to continue its life. It's the flower just blossoms because that's its purpose in that moment. Yeah. And when we connect to our what's our purpose in this moment, then then the bee comes and takes pollen and it and it, and it all works out. Right. And that's what I found like with that was the dance with the ultimate experience. Yeah. That it started off with me going, right, what's my purpose in this moment? And it's like, right, share the post in the group. And then it's on to the next moment. Okay, what's my purpose now? Right. I've got to answer the call to Steve because Steve's in the post and he wants to talk to me. And I've never spoke to him before. 
And then Eric's on the phone to me saying, hey, about like posting in Facebook groups. And, and it's like, right, what's my purpose? And when I, whenever I stayed totally present, things just carried on and carried on. It just kept getting better and better. But when I was in this story in my head of, oh, am I going to get this? And I'm not going to get that. That's when the, I would say, suffering start Again, suffering's a yeah. massively loaded word, right? But that's when the suffering started. Yeah, I can so relate to that. Thank you for sharing that. And uh, just that's been, just, that's been the yeah. same with the relationship as well, is that yeah. whenever I'm just being present in the moment with Jess and just being in the moment and, and really tapping into the nature of me and, and, and the core of who I am, and just go, right, what does this moment require right now? And it might just be nothing. Just sit and just be and just let her do her thing. And okay, cool. And then there's no suffering. And then it flows into the next moment and the next moment. And whenever there's, again, suffering in the relationship, it's usually from a place of I'm telling the story that I need to get something from her or I need to perform in a certain way in order to make sure she sticks around so I don't get abandoned. And the the irony is, is when you try and perform so that she sticks around, that's when she pulls away. And Yeah, yeah, totally. You're you're actually, you're you're trying to force an outcome. Yes. Yeah. When you attach the outcome. Yeah, yeah, totally. And, um, and so, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, right now, one of the uh, one of the challenges that I have been um, dealing with in my relationship has been just a um, yeah, my, my my wife who's um, gosh, she's thirty nine weeks pregnant, so we're about Ooh. to she's about to go into labor anytime, and um, it just happens that um, due to a lot of um, a lot of background stories, she's actually not really in any relationship with my parents. Um, and that was really, that was like a really, really hard one for me to lovingly accept. And I had done so much to try and open new ways of communicating and creating the possibility of us to, you know, be together and be harmonious. And, and it was almost like I had this healing story that life will be better when my family gets along in harmony. Mm. that was my hidden agenda is I am the savior. And because I'm the coach here, I am, I'm going to come in and I'm going to create the insights and the conditions for everyone to kind of have their, have the breakthroughs they need. And we're all going to be happily together again. And my hidden agenda was, I was actually being selfish Mm. because I wasn't comfortable in the face of no agreement. And when I say in the face of no agreement, what I really mean is there's a massive disagreement between my wife and my parents. They're not able to seemingly can't agree on many things and there's conflict. So my identity is I'm the peacemaker. I want to create harmony. And that was my hidden agenda. But my hidden agenda is actually I am uncomfortable with conflict. Mm And what do I actually want to do? I'm looking to change the situation. And the noble self-justifying excuse I tell myself is, I am the peace bringer. I bring harmony. It's like, well, hang on a sec. I'm not in harmony in myself. How am I going to bring harmony if I myself am not in harmony within this conflict? And, um, you know, I'm currently on a, on a, seminar in with, with, a, with a landmark program called um, excellence and uh it was really insightful because i i got to see that there's um a lot of the the work that um also that steve has done and and, and the foundation of the landmark forum which the book also talks about is getting complete with your past getting complete with relationships where you're incomplete And so, again, my story was, I'm going to get complete. But what I didn't understand is, for me to be complete, I thought I had to force an outcome for harmony. Mm. And what what occurred to me in the seminar is actually, the only way I can be complete is to be complete with the fact that this is incomplete. Yeah, nice. And that completion was not, conditioned to the situation and when that shifted oh man it was like a whole load just fell off of me and i fired myself from the role of peacemaker 
Nice. <laughs> That's not my job. Wow. And I noticed that a thing that dropped away was the resistance to what's going on. There was no resistance. And so I was able to enjoy time, and I still am able to enjoy time with my wife, with my mom, with my dad, and I'm no longer having conversations trying to change things. I'm no longer trying to enroll them into a new possibility of us being harmoniously together. Ooh. I get to just be present to what's here not trying to force an outcome or create a future that I think will be better. Mm. And coming back to what you said and the very essence of what you said around being loved and accepted, ultimately, I wanted my wife to be loved and accepted by my parents because mm. I want to be loved and accepted by my parents. Wow. Yeah. And wow. the freedom of letting go of that need for my parents to love and accept my wife. It's just like, it's, <laughs> I can just laugh about it now. And whenever, you know, whenever the, there are comments, I always had to defend her. I always had to, um, and I can just honor that that's what's true for them. And that's how they create my wife. And that's how they see my wife. And, um, I still fall into the trap of defending. Uh, I'm still not immune to that. I'm working on it. It's I'm, I'm a working progress. <laughs> mm. But I tell you what, it's um, it's shifted. It's shifted everything, and now I can just look forward to being a dad, and um, I can just look forward to being present to to how things are, and to be grateful for what is, and not suffering from what. I think, should be. Yes. That word should, isn't it? The word should, yeah. It, the word should is a great way to look at within yourself where are you not taking full ownership of your life. Because yeah. should is such a, such a victim word and it's such a disempowering word. Mm-hmm. And it, and it doesn't create anything. What are you, what are you hearing in this, Matt? I'm, I'm, I'm hearing that should, should be banished from the English. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I actually, I actually think um, it's not about making should wrong, but when we use should, it's an invitation to be present to what's really going on inside of you and to look at where there's resistance and to look at where you're not taking full responsibility for your life. So actually should is an invitation to look. Yeah. Because you, you, you're probably projecting out. Yeah. And so, so I actually think, gosh, if we, if we would ban it, there would be no opportunity to get a real breakthrough. Should just means there's a hidden agenda. Yeah. That's actually a, I don't know what the word is. I'd say it is a, Kind of like a red flag or a, um, a, smoke, a smoke alarm. How's a that? smoke alarm. Yeah, I like that. It's a smoke alarm. Yeah, should is a smoke alarm, and it's a way of access mm. to uncovering your hidden agenda. Completely agree. Completely yeah. agree. I remember I, I did a post about that actually with um, I bought uh, Jess the Byron Katie book because I know it would I know it would help and we're both open to exploring and things. But mm -hmm. I bought, which loving, one loving, loving what is loving what yeah. is yeah because uh, that was a game changer for me uh, many years ago and um and i still do the work as much as i can on it and i was like jess you should read that you should read the book you should read the book you should read the book you should and i told her for about three weeks that she should read the book and then i um got up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom and, and the book was literally staring me in the face and i'm like okay i don't need any more nudges universe i'll, I'll grab the book and I, I read i think like half a page and had one of the biggest insights breakthroughs um, that I had for a very long time. So this whole projection of you should read this was actually I should read this or there's something there for me. Um, and it was just an incredible profound insight that I had. So like you said, that should word, they should do yeah. this, they should do that, or they should be this or they should be that. Like you said, I think it's great. Yeah, that it's an invitation to look at, hang on a minute, what's going on for me? Yeah, 
and you know as a coach it's also a great way to listen to language you know and and and, and seeing how that gets in the way of intimacy you know it's just I'll give you an example I was I mean I was actually this was I was having a conversation with a friend who um she was she went on holiday in in Italy with a break from the three kids and she was with her husband and um she was telling me how she wasn't really she didn't really enjoy the holiday and it it was a real disappointment and um and she was giving me all the reasons why but something felt off and so I started getting curious about well, what is her hidden agenda for her not to enjoy her holiday. And as I, um, as I got present with that, I, um, I asked her with her permission, if, if I could, you know, say the, you know, something that I think would be uncomfortable and that she doesn't want to hear, but if it's okay, I'll... she gave me permission. And, and I said to her, um, it looks to me like your hidden agenda is envy. Mm. and she really heard that and she said to me oh my god that's so true and what had happened is they recently had a big move from from sydney to singapore and she had to do all the move by herself and she didn't get any help and she just felt unsupported and abandoned and had to do that by herself while her husband was working in singapore and so this trip was a way for him who felt because their relationship was very much based on giving and receiving. So there was an emotional debt that he had accumulated towards her. And so for him to reset, if you look at, if you look at things through giving and receiving, mm. if she gets a holiday and they have a great time together, then it resets the emotional debt. The problem was she felt that it wasn't fair because she had done all the work and now he's getting a holiday. And Ooh. so for her to reset the emotional debt, she didn't want to be happy because if she was happy, he would be happy. And if she was miserable, well, it's going to affect him. And that was just a way of her getting revenge to reset the balance so that the emotional debt was neutral. Ooh. I hear that. And she sabotaged without, you know, without even, um, yeah, without, without without examining these hidden agendas, her whole holiday was kind of sabotaged, and so it's it's really it's really important to to start asking yourself and start examining what these hidden agendas are and who are we being, you know? And that she was being, you owe me, mm. and and this is again like one of the. One of the big hidden agendas I see in relationship is the idea of giving and receiving. Yeah. And then wanting to do things to get something in return. You know, another example is he flew her business class so that she could spend time with his mother and the kids. And it felt like that that gave him leverage, right? So everything Whoa. it was it was it was so interesting to Gosh, to 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 observe the uh, yeah, and it, and and he had a story of, but I'm so generous, mm. and in that generosity lies selfishness, unexamined selfishness. Yeah, there's when you start looking at things, they become so clear. <laughs> yeah, um, especially pat like patterns are, are really good things to look at, aren't they? When you can see it, then it's like, right, what's my pattern? Like you said, with relationships, usually people have a pattern. We we attract a similar kind of partner, even though the form will change, the person will change. They they tend to have like similar traits, or we we have a pattern. I mean, my pattern in 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 all of life was life would get real good, um, and then I'll do something to sabotage it, and it'd go bad. And then mm -hmm. I'd build it back up again. And one of my coaches called it the um, the Phoenix um, mm -hmm. syndrome, which is like yeah. fly from the ashes and then burn it down to the ground, and then have to yeah. rebuild from the ashes again. And and then I looked at that. It was it was the last time me and Jess had a bit of a thing. And I was like, what is this? Like it got really good. And I remember we were lying in bed one morning and I remember saying to her, I was like, I'm, I'm happier than I've ever been. Like oh God, it's it's a beautiful, nice big bed. The dogs are on it. And it was a it's a cottage in the countryside. And and it was just like it's like right I'm, this is the the best i've ever had it's brilliant 
And then it was almost like the next day where things like blew up and we had a fallout, big, big fallout. And um, so I was like, right, what does, and one of the exercises I do is, is go in and go, right, what does this remind me of? What does this remind me of, this feeling? And what it was is, um, again, parents hurting me when, when I was kid, not physically hurting me, but like the whole abandonment thing. Yeah. And, and, and I realized that what all my parents now want is they love me and they just want me to be happy. But because I had this hidden agenda to get them back for causing me pain when I was younger, whenever I got happy and my parents go, oh, I'm really proud of you, really happy for you. I'm like, well, I, you don't get to be happy for me because you did this to me when I was like two or whatever. Mm. So now I'll go and sabotage it, be miserable, which yeah. in turn made them miserable. So that was my hidden agenda. That's revenge right there. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> and then it wasn't until I cleared that and was like, hang on a minute, I've got to offer them forgiveness because they were just doing the best of what they could at the time and what they had at the time. So I had to clear that, offer them forgiveness and send them love and then remind myself that we don't need to cut our nose off to spite our face and we could just live in the good and it doesn't matter if people are happy for us or jealous of us or any of that yeah and then, like i said since then things just keep getting better and better for us and that's not like a braggadocious comment yeah. which is yeah. what it used to be before like look at me and how good my life is now give me love it's just uh once you heal the thing oh yeah it it doesn't show up then the pattern is yeah. it's gone once you've healed the thing underneath the pattern right. you don't need to have the thing to bring your awareness to so the healing yeah yeah, that makes yeah, sense. yeah yeah so good so good and there's another hidden agenda that i'm picking up in what you're sharing which is something i hear a lot of parents say i just want my child to be happy yeah i just want you to be happy that in itself what if you examine that what does that mean like that's actually to me what i'm hearing is I want you to be happy based on my metrics of happiness. Yes. Not yours. So it's actually a lie. I don't want you to be happy. Mm -hmm. It's I want you to be controlled by what happiness means to me and for you to live by my standard of happiness, not yours. Yeah. That's an underlying, oft, not always, but often sort of an underlying um observation that i've that i've noticed behind that because ultimately what what i think is as a parent it's like i just want you to be free mm. i just want you to be free and to i think happiness is 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 it's rather like as a yeah what what would really be beautiful is i just want you to be free to be yourself to be self-expressed and to live your life on your terms. Like what a difference that I want you to be happy. Yeah. So and I, and, and I will, and I will love you, support you and respect you in no matter way and no matter how that looks for you. Mm. And that's that, for, that's for any, for, for any relationship. But, but it comes from the, we have to, we don't have to. What's the, yeah. It, it, it can only come, you can only, say that with conviction if you're being that for yourself right that's right it's it's like if i feel that i am successful i am successful based on whatever success means to me mm. but if i feel that my success is dependent on the approval of my parents um, which for a long time has been yeah. i will look and create a career that validates me being successful through their eyes. Mm. So even now, there have been times where I have played with the idea of going back to the hotel industry and becoming a, a general manager. And if I examine that, the real reason behind that is so I can be finally loved and accepted by my parents. So I can finally be successful in their eyes mm. and that as an unexamined belief can be a lifelong thing i've known people that have gone studied something in university because their hidden agenda was i want to be loved and accepted by my parents yeah. so it's 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 kind of a big deal to what we what we're exploring here today and when it is uncovered the freedom that lies on the other side of it and that's ultimately, I believe, what what we really desire 
is to just ultimately be free to be yeah. fully ourselves, right? Yeah, yeah, freedom. And actually, what I felt the ultimate book, the ultimate coach book, really points to is a way of living life where you're free to be, free to express yourself, mm. free to do from the place of being free. And it's really a book of freedom more than anything and a way to access more of that freedom within each and every one of us. That's, that's a really good way to summarize um, that book. Really good way to summarize that book. And yeah, I think the suffering comes from, uh, any, any suffering comes from this belief of story that what we want or need is outside of us. And we have to perform in a certain way that isn't us in order to get it. And that's, that's just hard work. It's tiring. It's confusing. It's, it, but when, like you say, you come home to this knowing that you're good as you are and you will be supported and, and you're safe yeah. and, and yeah. all of your needs will be met. I think that's the underlying thing is that when you realize that all of your needs currently are met and they will be met if you be free to be you. Yeah. And it's, it's, that's when the fun begins. Yeah. 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 Beautiful. And there are two things I'm hearing there. One is distinguishing those hidden beliefs and taking responsibility for them. Yes. And by say, by taking responsibility, what I'm saying is letting go of your attachment to it or even giving up the, the hidden agenda recognizing it, mm. giving it up. And that's a lifetime practice. And um, that's something that I'm, yeah, this conversation is reminding me of. Mm. And yeah, keeping the ball on, keeping my eye on the, uh, <laughs> on the hidden agendas because they're not easy to see. So thank you. Thank you, Matt, for this beautiful reminder for sharing yourself so openly truthfully vulnerably um i feel this is a, a beautiful place to bring this conversation to completion is is there something you want to share before we uh before we complete our conversation today the the only thing i would say just from my personal experience is is that Nothing is bigger than us. No fear, no story, no situation or circumstance is bigger than us. And one of Steve's declarations in his in his in his document is that I don't sweat the small stuff. And it's all mm. small stuff, including death and dying. And when we can fully, fully accept and own that from a place of yeah. realizing that we are ultimate life or whatever definition you want to use, right? Light, energy, consciousness, awareness. When we realize it is small stuff and we don't yeah. need to sweat it, that's, again, that's where the fun is. That's where the freedom is. That's where the play is. And ultimately, that's what we're here to do, mm. I believe, is just to have fun and play. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, have what we want and the experience yeah. we want, but from a place of wholeness and completeness. And we're here to give while also, hang on, checking out what's my hidden agenda here. Yeah. This is a new level. There might be a new devil that I'm facing. And but just know that whatever, however big the boss is at the end of the level or the devil or whatever you want to call it, you're still bigger than it. And there's a way yeah. to move through it and overcome it. So good. I love that. Um Matt, thank you for those, yeah, for those words. I also want to say thank you for all of you who have been listening to our conversation today. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. What do you think of this new format? What do you think of having uh, um, today that this episode really kind of with a focus around hidden agendas and having more of a topic? Um, I'd love to hear from you. And if um, you want to be in touch with Matt, Matt, what would be the best way for people to connect with you and uh, get in touch with you if they feel drawn to do that? Uh, two, two or three ways. The first way is, is ping me an email, which is the coach Matt Smith at gmail.com. The coach Matt Smith at gmail.com. Matt with two T's. Um, I'm on Facebook as Matt, facebook.com forward slash Matt Smith 2310. Um, and Instagram as coach Matt Smith as well. But if they want to get in touch, then I'm, I'm more than open to having any conversation about 
um, self. Yeah, beautiful. Well, Matt, thank you for uh, for sharing yourselves with us today. I feel enriched and nourished from from this conversation, and uh, thank you for sharing and being here with us today. It's my absolute pleasure. Thank you very much for being with me and uh, doing this dance flip. I always love it when we get together and we just riff on stuff and. I, always, I mean, I've taken so much from, from this myself, so thank you for showing up and, and, and being you. I appreciate you. Thank you for listening. If you know someone who would benefit from today's conversation, please share this podcast with them. Also, we invite you to visit theultimatecoachbook.com so you can continue your personal exploration of being. There you will find links to join our wonderful community, get your own copy of the ultimate coach book and more simply go now to www.theultimatecoachbook.com that's www.theultimatecoachbook.com the link is also available in the show notes we appreciate your support be blessed be you